With us is Dan Mitchell, Dan, the Center for Freedom and Prosperity chairman. And, um, you know, it, it depends on which side wins out here, Dan, I guess. Some would say, well, China's on top of this and putting this economically is what we're speaking about. They're putting stimulus into their economy. They'll be able to kind of muddle through. Maybe it'll shave a little off GDP. Same time, you know, whether the numbers are accurate or not that they came out with originally, you shave a full percentage point off GDP, that's, uh, I guess, nothing to sneeze at. What do you make of the ec economic impact as this is all playing out from the virus? There's two issues I think we should look at. One is just independent of the competence and policy decisions of the Chinese government. There's no question this is bad for their economy. If we had something similar uh, in our economy, it would hurt us as well. Now, uh, we're more medically advanced than they are outside of some of the big cities that are very modern. China still has some backward elements to their uh, country, their economy, uh, the, the wet markets where these uh, this disease allegedly started. We would never find something like that in the United States. Uh, so. Set that aside. Now let's consider the Chinese government's reaction. I don't think these so-called stimulus schemes are very effective, but that's even, I think, secondary to the greater problem, which is that China's economy is fragile because there's simply too much government intervention. There's too much cronyism in the, in the financial system. And so all it takes, you know, when you combine that with Trump's uh, uh, trade war, there are just lots of forces buffeting the Chinese economy right now. So you're worried then about global growth because there is uh, this theory out there that second half of the year as bad as it might be now and even if it's rough for the next few months you know as you know oftentimes whether it's a storm or something else like like this an outbreak once we get through it then the economy uh, wherever it's hit the hardest comes roaring back it, 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 whether that's china or the or the rest of the world that we might see a nice bounce back in the second half of the year we very well could see a bounce back, uh, but that's one of the reasons why I focus more on the long run. Mm. I focus on the fact that, that President Xi has been actually increasing government intervention. So in other words, right. the period of sort of semi-liberalization uh, and the partial move toward free markets between, say, 1980 and maybe last decade, Xi's been reversing that a little bit. And, and I, I can't help but underscore how weak and how fragile China's economy is because of all the debts that's built up because the government, mm -hmm. in effect, is steering money uh, toward the firms that are connected to the to and the uh, power brokers in China. Right. That's not the way to run an economy. Which kind of is the larger story, which is the point you're getting at, if you look at this big picture, the political threat eventually, which would then, uh, I guess, be an economic threat to Xi Jinping. Do you view this as being kind of just another peg um, in a building political threat to, to Xi Jinping's rule in, in, in China? The great fear that China's leaders uh, supposedly have is what happens if their people no longer feel like the future is bright, that right. they're not going to be delivering growth. And, and I do think that with all the debt that's built up, with all the, the zombie firms, with all the corruption in the financial system of capital being steered on the basis of politics rather than economics, at some point, mm -hmm. that's all going to sort of come together, straws on the camel's back, whatever metaphor you want to use. And that's when all of a sudden we have to worry. Does Xi have a, have a brutal crackdown a la Tiananmen Square? Does he decide, wait, I've been going in the wrong direction. I need to go back toward the liberalization model, which, of course, right. is knock on wood what I'm hoping for. I don't know. Well, whether it's Hong Kong, whether it's this, whether it's something we haven't seen yet, it's all um, a big part of a broader conversation. Dan, always good to see you, and we'll, we'll keep following it. Dan Mitchell with uh, thank us you. today. Thank you. Dan, Lauren. Yep.